So how could you own symbols? Like how can you own data? That is a, that's a crazy thing because if you have a, a, a data, a symbol, I could just copy it. And actually in the digital age, I use the right, right mouse button, copy, paste. So there it is. Who knows if it was yours or it's mine? It's a digital copy. So how could you, how could you own information and how could you own data and how can you not distinguish it from from the data I just copied from you, like what is how how could that be? Well, instead of now explaining to you how the blockchain solves it, what I will do is we do it the other way around. We ask ourselves, what does it mean to have property? And I invite you to go go with me through inventing a really good property rights system, like the best one we could theoretically think of, and it has all the good components that it needs. And spoiler alert. Once we have all of that and we work through it and we came up with the best property rights system we can theoretically imagine, it will turn out that is the blockchain. And that's why the blockchain is such a big deal. It allows us to give property even to something like data and information. So let's invent our own system and let's make it a good one. Let's make it a really good one. All right, ready? Let's get going. What do we need to have property? Let's think about that. To have property, there's first me, good old me. I, we were, became self-aware as humans and we realized there's a me. Some animals are self-aware, but at the beginning we started to become self-aware and we created the story of the ego. So there's the me. And then, you know, apart from the animals, we also want to have property because we have something. Some animals have property, monkeys, for example, could own a stick. But for us, it became very important because we wanted to attach that to the me, to our perception of self. So we added this property to it, made our egos bigger and whoa, did that motivate us because then we became bigger. And once we became bigger, we can defend ourselves better. It provides fitness in an evolutionary sense. So that's great. So then there's me and I have something. And then the me, my perception of self is bigger. I am bigger because I have all of these things. So I have something. Now, I could walk around with this something and always hold on to it. That's how I can really show that I have it. I have my sack of gold in the Wild West, right? And I better like I better put it under my pillow when I sleep because like how can I how can I have this property? Let's think about it. Like how can you hold on to this property? Well, you always have to hold it hold it in your hand, right? You have to like grab onto it. If a monkey owns a stick and leaves it laying around, another monkey takes it. I mean, where how would the monkey claim that it was his stick or her stick or so how could we be hold but that is very inconvenient if you have bigger properties and you have a lot of properties you cannot hold on to you cannot fill your pockets with them or like imagine you own a car like how could you like that would be very inconvenient oh so what we came up with is a certificate of ownership so we have some certificate of ownership and that's there and then i i have my car there but if my car is gone i still have the paper and i better keep the paper in my pocket or somewhere else with somebody i trust but i need the certificate of ownership so that's the first part. In a property right system, I need some kind of information. So the certificate of ownership is basically a database. It's information. First component, an information record. That's what we need. In blockchain lingo, that's called the ledger. Second, what I need. Well, there's you. And you also have something. And you also have a certificate of ownership that's also here on the ledger, on the information record. Now, what if we trade and I give you something and then you become bigger? And I become smaller. And now you have something and I have nothing. So in order to be able to do that, we also have to distinguish between you and me on this ledger. And we have to make sure that we really know that it's you and that it's me. Because otherwise I could say like, oh, yeah, you gave me something. And it's like, no, no, I never agreed on that. So we really need to know who is who in that game. Because I cannot speak for you and you cannot speak for me. So you have to certify that, yes, uh, I gave this to you and you and I have to certify I gave it to you. Like, really, it's me. It's me. I became smaller. That's that's painful. So I better make sure that I agree with that. So we need to verify who is who. Sure. Now, imagine then you trade it back to me. Now, that becomes confusing because then if I wouldn't know when that happened, I could also say like, oh, no, 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 you, you gave that to me already yesterday. And it's like, no, no, you were about to give it to me. Like, oh, no, but I already gave it to you. Like, I don't have it here. Like, oh, you don't have it? Like, but so you need to also verify when things happen because otherwise things get really confusing. Or if you say, well, I give you, I don't know, something, but I already got sold it to somebody else too. And I don't have it in my bank account. 
that's the problem of double spending when the check bounces. So you have to know, like, did you spend the money already? Or is it still in the bank? So we need a, a time registry there as well. So an information record, we need to know who and we need to know when. These are the first three basic components that any property rights system needs to have. And now we want to make it a good one. And that is a really good one. We do that without a need for a trusted third party, because usually these certificates of ownership, where are they at? For example, your certificate of ownership of a car, where is it at? Well, you have a little paper that, oh, do you still have that? That little paper, that ownership of your car? Maybe you have it, maybe you don't have it. But even if you lost that little piece of paper that shows that you own that car, there's a registry at here in the United States would be the Department of Motor Vehicles the DMV. And if your car is stolen and you even lost this paper because something, maybe something bad happened, your house burned down, you can still go to the DMV and say like, well, this car is mine. It's registered under my name. And you pay a handsome amount just to keep track of this property of this car. And you have to pay the registration every few years. And in most countries of the world, that's how it is. If you have like a big property, like a car, you need to register it. And then this trusted third party for us here, it's the Department of Motor Vehicle that keeps the record and it charges for that. Now, what if I want to do that without the DMV, without the trusted third party? Well, the solution here is we make many, 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 many copies. So even if one copy gets lost and you lose your paper and the DMV loses its paper, there are still many more copies because that's the problem. What if the house of the DMV burns down or their server crashes and their database gets deleted? So if we have so many copies that it's impossible to take them all out, even if a hacker would like to attack them, then we can do that without a trusted third party. So that's the trick. That's the trick there.